All right, hello folks. Uh, I've received a bunch of questions about how to tell, you know, where to stop with resonance structures, how do you know how many to draw, and, and so I just want to walk through that in this video. Okay, so looking at this molecule on the screen, the first couple of things I would start to look for are uh, double bonds and non-bonding electrons, uh, and I'd also like to look at where not to, to expect any resonance structures, and so I would look for structures like this methyl group over on the end that already has a full complement of electrons, it already has a full octet, which means full orbitals, no room for anything else to get in there, uh, and so that would be a, a point where I would not expect uh, any other resonance structures. If I look over, whoops, on the rest of the molecule, so again an sp3 hybridized carbon, no resonance, And same thing over on the left hand side. So here's some places where I need to stop and then I can start to think about how uh, that double bond and that nitrogen atom might be involved. All right, next thing. Anytime we break a double bond, we can break it in two different ways. And so uh, I might think about breaking that double bond in toward the nitrogen atom. And let's draw the result of that resonance structure. If you're not sure, give it a try. This one's not going to work out, but we're going to give it a go anyway. I drew in that top proton just to remind us that it is, in fact, there. Okay, so, I mean, this is a resonance structure we, we could, in principle, draw, um, but the thing with it is that we already have, oops, not three charges, two charges. And we brought two pairs of electrons close together. And if that happened in a real molecule, there would be electronic repulsion. So that's a bit of a hint that mm, it's probably not the best thing um, to look for in terms of a, a, an important resonance contributor, con contributor to the resonance hybrid. Okay, so let's look at something different instead. So let's go back to that original structure instead. Let's think about breaking that double bond uh, in the opposite direction, see where that gets us. Okay, so now that double bond, it's uh, non-bonding electrons are over on the left-hand carbon, then a positive charge, then electrons, and so uh, now we don't have that electronic repulsion anymore. Uh, in fact, we can have an attraction between those electrons on the nitrogen atom and positive. And so we could try drawing another resonance structure then. Okay, so now in this resonance structure, now there's a double bond between nitrogen and uh, the carbon atom, positive charge on the nitrogen atom, negative over on the, on the carbon atom. So having done that now, we've now drawn the three resonance structures. And from there, we could use that information to draw the real structure of the molecule, which would be the, the resonance hybrid. Okay, so the main thing, if we just review what we did, uh, we looked uh, carefully near the double bonds, the non-bonding electrons. We identified areas where there would not be any resonance, those sp3 hybridized uh, atoms that already had full orbitals, all single bonds, so we knew not to involve any of those. We systematically broke the double bond. We checked both directions and decided one direction didn't make as much sense as the other direction. And then we continued on involving the non-bonding electrons. Okay, so that's the main thing to be thinking about. One more thing we're going to look at, uh, and we do have to make sure that if, if there are going to be electrons involved in resonance, um, that they're all located in overlapping uh, pi orbitals. So let's take a look what that means. We'll give two examples. I'll give one example of the, the thing that we essentially just looked at. Okay, so to be overlapping then this nitrogen and these pi electrons, let's draw these over. We'll do those pi ones in blue. Okay, so the nitrogen's, elect oops, nitrogen's electrons are in a p orbital, and that p orbital can overlap with the pi system where those pi electrons are located. And so here I've drawn them vertical, vertically. And by being vertical, they can all overlap and form a single pi system. So they have to overlap in, for, in order for resonance to occur, in order for electrons to be shared or delocalized between all the atoms that are part of that system. Let me show an example where that's not the case. Okay, so in this molecule called pyridine, it's kind of like a benzene ring, but it's one of the carbon atoms has been replaced with a nitrogen atom. So let's draw that out. I'll draw it as if I were drawing it on its side here. Okay. 
And it's if those two front carbons were coming out toward us. So that nitrogen has a double bond between the nitrogen and that kind of front carbon on the right hand side. There's another double bond that I've drawn between two other carbons and there's also one between the two carbons at the back. Okay, and all of those are overlapping and forming together a, a delocalized pi system. And we could draw all the uh, orbitals involved in that pi system. But now let's figure out what's going on with that double bond. So now let's figure out what's going on with those non-bonding electrons. So if they were going to be involved in resonance, I mean, I, I could draw some electron pushing arrows that would make it look like they were involved in resonance. But the thing is that that nitrogen atom already has a p orbital drawn as part of the pi system that's already parallel with the rest of that pi system. And so in fact, these non-bonding electrons are located in an sp2 hybridized orbital that's pointing away from the rest of that pi system. And so they're actually at 90 degrees to the pi system. So therefore we can say there's no overlap and they're not involved in resonance with that ring. Okay, so just like we saw before, we looked into, in the previous question, we looked into areas where there was not any resonance because there simply wasn't any room in the orbitals. It was the, the atom, the carbon here, for example, was all, uh, all had all sigma bonds in it. So we knew just to use the double bond and the electrons. Then the next part, we also have to make sure that any non-bonding electrons uh, can overlap with any double bonds or even double bonds overlapping with, with other double bonds. Um, so we have to make sure they can all be parallel and overlap. And we saw in the case of the NCC system that there was possibility for overlap, but we saw down with this nitrogen uh, atom in this aromatic ring that the pi system itself was overlapping, but these non-bonding electrons uh, could not go into a p orbital. That p orbital is already being used in the pi system, so they're at 90 degrees in an sp2 hybridized orbital instead.